doesn't change anything, but, but, but if, it's, if it's closer, then it's closer. Yes. In that, in that state it's in that he's looking at? I, I take it that that's the question. Overall, yeah. substantially so. Uh, substantially so. Thank you. You further, in your testimony, you further talked about in, in describing this bottle in your, in your, I'm sorry, your demonstration. Let's stick with that, okay? You, you put a, a, a propofol bottle in, in it, uh, actually you propped a propofol bottle inside an IV bag that you cut, right? Correct. This propofol, this also was donated is that right? No, I purchased that from a local pharmacy. You purchased it yourself? Yes. You paid for it? Yes. I'm hoping to be reimbursed. <laughs> I hope so, too. Thank you. Um, the propofol bottle that you used was not the same propofol bottle, dimension-wise, that was, that was found uh, in Michael Jackson's house. Is that right? That is correct. It's thinner. Correct. It's taller. Correct. You also, prior to putting that propofol bottle in the IV bag, the cut IV bag, you actually did an initial demonstration by draining some of some propofol fr from it by hanging it from its hanging tab. Is that right? Do you remember that? That is correct. That? So the prop propofol bottle that you put in that cut IV bag had some propofol out of it already, had some liquid out of it already. Is that right? Yes. yes. Would you estimate for us how much? Well, the, most of what was removed was removed in the process of running the line through. And Would the you? volume of the line, I would estimate to be about six or seven cc's. All right. And that's the bottle that you used in your demonstration. Is that right? That's correct. Have you ever had occasion to do the demonstration with this bottle? No. This bottle being uh, uh, People's 30, I'm holding it. Thank you. Now, the bag, People's 29, when's the first time you saw this? I had seen pictures of it, but the first time I saw it was in this courtroom. And using those pictures, you did your best to estimate the dimensions of the hole in that bag, right? That is correct. Uh, and this is a bag you purchased from Seacoast Medical Supply? That's correct. And, and as a result of the, uh, Seacoast is not going to sell you just one bag, you had to buy a bunch of them. Is that right? <laughs> I, brought, I bought three bags for $150 because of the need to have them rush shipped to me. I, I bought them only a few days before I flew out. It didn't, it didn't occur to me that I should purchase Seacoast Supplies, which is why I didn't have the Excel set. And it's why to actually get the actual bag. I only uh, thought of it on uh, Wednesday, and I paid quite a bit of money for them to overnight ship me three bags so I could pick it up on Friday before flying out on Saturday. And then you drain the bag, one of the bags, correct, and cut a hole to try to match the hole that was on People's 29. Correct. You did all that yourself? Correct. Did, did, were you requested to by Mr. Walgren, or was this something you did yourself? I was very curious to find out what, what this, I was, I, I have to admit that the bag piqued my curiosity. I'd never seen anything like it. Well, in fact, your testimony was that you had never seen anybody do that with an IV bag, right? Uh, uh, other than knowing that Dr. Murray did it, I have never seen anyone do that. Dr. Schaefer, how do you know Dr. Murray did it besides what you've interpreted from the evidence? That, that one was found at the scene? All right, let's That's get my it. only evidence that one was found at the scene. That's what I thought. Um, on, a on April 17th, when you did your report, well, look, 
April 15th. April 15th. You had been contacted earlier than that, is that right? I believe it was the 31st of March. By Mr. Walker? Correct. Who told you that the defense had employed Dr. Paul White? Correct. You knew Dr. Paul White? Of course. And, and he told you that he would like uh, to uh, perhaps use your services. Is that how the conversation went, or you want to be a little more specific than that? I think that's an accurate characterization. He, I, he had to. He asked me whether or not I would uh, consider this, and um, I, I told him that yes, I, I would. Be, I would consider it. And he shipped you a packet of information. That is correct. Included in that packet of information were witness statements. Correct. Including security staff statements. Correct. Right? House. Keeping keepers, house staff statements, right? Correct. Paramedics? Yes, I, 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 yes. UCLA medical records? Yes. And one of those statements that he sent you was Alberto Alvarez's statement? Correct. And in fact, Mr. Waldron told you that was one of the interest, that was one of the statements that interested him in this case? Incorrect. Did you happen to review in these, this packet of materials any of the doctor's reports that were made prior to you being engaged? Let me repeat. I said that was incorrect. Mr. Walgren never called No, I'm asking attention. you a question, Dr. Sorry, Schaefer. Sir. Did you review any of the doctor's reports that were engaged in this case prior to your employment? Your yes, I read the entire package. Oh, prior to my employment? No, no, I had agreed before I got anything. I told them I would help them out. All right. Did, did, you, did you read any of the doctor's statements prior to making your report? Yes. All of them? Yes. What about Dr. Larson's report? Oh, Dr. Phil Larson. Um, may I ask Mr. Walgren if that was in the report? I did read it, but I don't recall if it was in the report that was sent to me. May I, may I, may I ask No, Mr. I don't, unless counsel wants to go there. Would you have the ability to read this report pro without Dr. Mr. Walgren sending it to you? The, your question was whether I had read that prior to writing my report, and I don't recall. I, I definitely read it. I don't recall if I read part of my report, and I'd like to ask Mr. Walgren if he sent it to me. If he sent it to me before my report, I can guarantee I read it. Do you but know I... Dr. Larson? Oh, yes. From yes. UCLA? Yes, absolutely. Did, did you speak to him about this case? No. And you know in Dr. Larson's report that he speculated that perhaps... Objection, <coughs> unless he relied on it in forming his opinion, it's inadmissible <coughs> hearsay. No, we have to get to that point first in terms of the question. The objection sustained. Dr. Larson's report discussed... Objection. Objection, unless he relied on it in forming his opinion. The objection is sustained. Well, he, he, he's, all right. You, your testimony 802, is you don't 802, 803, 804. Your testimony is you don't know whether you relied on it in forming your opinion. Is that right? I did not rely on it in forming my opinion. I can guarantee that. Okay. Um, but you, you, you ultimately reached the conclusion in April of 2011, and by the way, you understood that when, he, when Mr. Walgren called you, the case was already set for trial. You knew that, right? Correct. And you knew that it was set for trial actually in May of 2011? Correct. And it was in that opinion that you wrote in April where you said, You, you have your report in front of you, obviously, right? I'll be happy to pull it up. I don't, want to, I don't want to misquote you. I know you, you, you're going to need to read it. No, let me, let, me, let me grab it. All right. If I don't have it there, I, this is why I have my laptop here. I can always pull it up here. I was holding it all day yesterday and the day before, but today I don't know that I have it on me. Whoops, I didn't hear you. I was holding it the last... You're here? I, I have it now, yes. Go ahead. One moment. Are you ready? Wait, before I just uh, ask you something or made a comment, you were saying something and I didn't catch it. I don't think Ms. Theodore did either. Just my apologies. What I said is that I had the physical report the last two days, but it's somewhere in this paperwork. It's easier to find on my laptop. Thank you. you. But you have it now. I, I'm looking at it. All right. Looking at page 14. Page 14.
Yes. And I'm going to take you down to the third paragraph. You, sure. You can see that's where I'm heading. You said to understand what might have happened, right? Mm hmm And you actually italicized. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. You actually italicized might, yes. right, for emphasis. Yes. You said, I have simulated an infusion of 100 milliliters of propofol. Yes. And in that same paragraph, you say, you mention an empty vial of propofol was found in the blue bag where it was placed by Alvarez. Is that... Right? That is correct. Uh, an empty 100 milliliter vial of propofol was found in the blue bag where it was placed by Alvarez. Correct. That's what, that's what it says. And you know that, that it was after the time you wrote this report that Alberto Alvarez was, was for the first time taken to the property room and identified People's 30 as the bottle in People's 29. There's a positive speculation on part of this witness, Your Honor. Overall, you, you do know that? No, I don't know that. Is it your statement that Alberto Alvarez, is it your testimony that Alberto Alvarez's statement says, I saw a propofol bottle in a bag? That was what, what he said. And I'd be happy to read it from his statement if, if I don't have a copy with me. But he made a very interesting reference to seeing a blue bottle inside a bag in something milky. I do not believe he used the word propofol. But I'm happy, if you can hand me a statement, I'll be happy to read to you what I based that statement on. I'll do that for you, Doc. Thank you. Right, let me just get it, OK? OK. You do remember Alberto Alvarez saying there was milky substance in the bag, right? Yes, a blue bottle and a milky substance is what he said. OK. Blue, blue bag or blue bottle? I thought he said blue. I, I have to look at the statement. Let's just let's get the actual statement so I can, can read. What you said precisely. in your in your statement was an empty 100 milliliter vial of propofol in a blue bag it was found in a blue bag. Is that what you mean to say? What I meant to do was to reflect what I had read in Mr. Alvarez's statement. And and it is possible that my. It is possible that my 19-page report submitted two weeks after, on April 15th, might have not stated exactly what Alvarez stated, but I'm happy to clarify that for you if that's helpful. You're human. People make mistakes. It's all right. <laughs> it's tax day. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the bottom line is you made that assessment about the bottle prop propped up in a bag based on Alberto Alvarez's statement that you read. That is correct. Had you ever met Alberto Alvarez? No. You ever spoke, spoke to him on the phone? No. Did you, ever, did you even listen to the, the, the statement that he made, the recording that he made with the police? Listen to the recording? I have not listened to the recording. How about the transcript? You've seen the transcript, though, right? I've seen the transcript. When did you see the transcript? This is the transcript of this. This is the statement that he made at the time. Well, I'm talking about the literal transcript of the conversation he had with police detectives on August 31st, 2009. Did you read that transcript? And I'd object. I'm not certain the witness knows what counsel referred to, the difference between a report or a transcript, or if we could... Well, you can let us know if, if you need I re I read a, I read a report. This is about a two-page report. I mean, if you have a transcript, I'm happy to look at it. Let me show you. I'll, let, I'll just clear it up for you, sure. okay? Let me show you. What are we at? Why, why? We, why, why? Yes. I apologize, Doctor. There is some right with my right. That's okay. I, I won't read those parts. All right. You, you can't. But why, why?